Welcome to Wealth Matters for Physicians, brought to you by Altfest Personal Wealth Management. In today's video, I'm asking Dave Kressner, Managing Advisor at Altfest, three important bond investing questions. To let you know, for more than 40 years, physicians have tuned to Altfest to help them invest and plan financially to gain the financial security they deserve. We do this as a fiduciary in a fully objective, no commissions manner, which means you can always count on us to put your best interests first and to always be on your side. Our first question for today is, what do you think about using dividend-paying stocks instead of bonds in a portfolio? A great question, sort of one we get very often, and dividend-paying stocks are certainly an interesting investment to consider for inclusion within a diversified portfolio in certain circumstances. However, dividend-paying stocks aren't bonds. And one of the roles that we expect the bonds to play in the portfolio is to dampen volatility when stocks waver, which unfortunately, inevitably, they will. So while dividend-paying stocks may fare better in that circumstance, they likely won't fare as well as bonds. So when you think of bonds being that safe money part of your portfolio, really the bedrock part of your portfolio, I don't think it would be prudent to consider dividend-paying stocks as a replacement for, um, for bonds for that reason. Our second question for Dave is, what are your thoughts about having international bonds in a portfolio? Sure, another great, uh, another great question. And you often hear about the importance of having international stocks in a diversified portfolio. Well, considering having international bonds in a portfolio can be a very important consideration as well. However, there is another important consideration when it comes to incorporating bonds into your portfolio. As we've discussed, we think of bonds as part of the safe part of your portfolio. When investing in bonds, uh, international bonds, not all of them are necessarily going to be denominated in U.S. dollars. So you need to be aware of the, uh, the fact of whether you're investing in bonds issued in U.S. dollars or issued in a foreign currency. And if you're investing in bonds issued in a foreign currency, those types of investments can really be quite a bit more vo uh, volatile. And while that isn't necessarily mean that you need to steer away from those investments, it does give you pause if the bond part of the portfolio is supposed to be the part of the portfolio that provides um, protection in the event that the, uh, the, uh, market, uh, the markets decline. So I think international bonds can play an important role. However, you need to be very mindful of the type of international bonds that you're investing in, whether they're denominated in U.S. dollars or not in U.S. dollars. And if they're not in denominated in U.S. dollars, understand the risk that you're taking and taking that on in moderation and intentionally. Our third and last question in today's video is, what is your opinion regarding owning bond mutual funds in an, in an investment portfolio as compared to individual bonds in portfolio? Right, yeah, this is a question that we get very often. And I think really kind of, uh, the, you know, the answer perhaps is kind of a little from column A and potentially a little for column B, that you can make an argument for owning both. That I think individual bonds can make sense if you're focused on high quality bonds where there really is sort of like no concern about the default or the inability of the issuer to be able to pay you back. And you aren't trying to employ a specific strat uh, strategy that perhaps may require a greater level of activity that you wouldn't be able to achieve on your own. So for example, I think buying individual municipal bond, high quality municipal bonds or individual treasury bonds, for example, could be something to consider within your portfolio. But when delving into areas of the bond market that are perhaps like more, eso uh, more esoteric or acquire a higher degree of skill and expertise when uh, to navigate them successfully, like the uh, mortgage-backed bond market, or at least certain parts of the mortgage-backed bond market, for example, I think in that case, mutual funds are the best way to access them. So I think both can make sense. And in fact, in a diversified portfolio, a prudent mix of uh, those where you have the, the right type of investment for the right type of exposure is the best way to, to do it. Well, thank you very much, David, for answering today's submitted questions. If you have a question that you'd like us to potentially answer in a future video, please enter it in the comments section below. If you're a physician who would like to speak to us about your own personal financial situation, 
via complimentary, no obligation consultation, please contact my colleague Jesse Freeling at altfest at 212-796-8732 or by emailing Jesse at his email address, which is also in the description of today's video. Lastly, to receive notifications when we release future videos, please be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon below. Well, that's it for today, physicians. I look forward to being with you again in our next video. And until then, be well and remember to keep on optimizing your finances or let us help you if you'd like.